Hi, I'm Sandy Burnett, Hogwood Fellow of the Academy of Ancient Music, the UK-based orchestra that's at the forefront of the early music scene. The Academy of Ancient Music draws on cutting-edge research and scholarship into Baroque and classical music to create vivid and exciting recordings and live performances. And this film is part of our Breaking Down Baroque series that takes a good look at the repertoire from 1600 to 1750. Head to aam.co.uk to find out more. Now this time round we're taking a close look at a little known and important work by a well-known composer. He is George Frederick Handel, but the work in question is his Brockus Passion, for which the first recorded performance took place during Holy Week in 1719. It tells the story of the final days in the life of Jesus. It takes us from the Last Supper, through Jesus' arrest, trial, sentencing to death, and finally, his crucifixion. So why is the Brockus Passion worth exploring? Two reasons. For every lover of Baroque music, this is a neglected work that deserves further exploration. It tells the passion story in vivid and unflinching detail, drawing on the seemingly limitless musical and melodic imagination of this great German Baroque composer. Secondly, if you're familiar with the two great passion settings of Johann Sebastian Bach, the John Passion of 1724 and the Matthew Passion of 1727, then this is definitely a work you should get to know. Once you hear the Brockes Passion, then lots of elements of those two later works fit into place. It's like the missing piece in the jigsaw. This Brockes Passion is something quite different, a throwback to Handel's Lutheran upbringing in Germany. And with me now to explore Handel's Brockes Passion is Dr. Ruth Smith, Handel scholar and author of Handel's Oratorios and 18th Century Thought. Ruth, what do we know about Bartolt Heinrich Brockes? Brockes was a very interesting man. Uh, he was a contemporary of Handel's. In fact, they were at university together, uh, both of them studying law, but neither of them uh, actually practicing law full time, both of them deciding while they were at university that they would prefer to pursue the arts. Some people have seen in the almost gruesomely graphic nature of some of the text about uh, Jesus' suffering and the suffering of others in the work, um, the uh, impact of the Thirty Years' War, in which, just to put it in perspective, four times as many people died in Europe as did in the First World War. And Germany in particular was devastated. And Brock's text brings that very closely into focus, which I think may be one reason why uh, 19th and 20th century musicologists drew back from it in some horror, uh, because it is uh, not compatible with the idea of the lofty spiritual, but it greatly humanizes the text, uh, as does Brockes' treatment of all the individual characters. Uh, above all, it is a work about human feeling and human emotion. It's a drama, like a stage play. Uh, unlike, uh, I feel, the Bach Passions, where you have a lot of reported action, the Evangelist is, is really central to both the John and the Matthew Passions by Bach. The Evangelist in, in the Brockers Passion doesn't have that much. It's all about how the characters react to each other in a human way, what, what they're feeling. Um, so it's something you could, you could actually really stage. Um, there's real drama going on and real feeling and emotion between the characters. Uh, so yes, there's, there's um, very much uh, uh, it's centered on, on that, the psychology between the characters. It's a piece I, I think, I, the first time I heard it was in Cambridge. I remember hearing it then and thinking, why haven't I heard this piece? You know, everybody was doing the Matthew Passion. I wasn't even doing the Matthew Passion at the time by Bach. And 
was struck by it then, and it's a piece I've been sort of trying to to get done ever since. And uh, we've finally, finally been been uh, been able to do it, and it's all come together rather wonderfully. And uh, it's been an, a massive um, project, and it's sort of snowballed. For the the whole project has sort of taken on it, it, a life of its own. Um, musicologically and musically, so it's, it's very, very exciting. You know, myself coming from an English literature background and uh, not being bilingual, to me it's terribly important that we really understand the words. And, well, the first performance of this edition is going to be to a mainly English-speaking audience. And I think it's wonderful that we are going to have um, a translation that doesn't bowdlerize, as many have done in the past, sort of trying to diminish and soften the immediacy and vividness of the text, uh, but something that really conveys uh, what it is actually like. I don't think any performance or recording really has done that yet. And I'm very much looking forward to the Academy of Ancient Music performance because I think it will be revelatory. And I don't think this work has had its proper recognition in England. Uh, and I think perhaps the Brockers Passion time has come because you know, now that we daily see on our television screens so much of atrocity and intolerance around the world, to have it so vividly displayed to us um, in a polite concert hall, I think, could be a very profound experience. This is the first time I've, I've got to do this piece, and I knew it was special. We spent today rehearsing and, and putting down some of the the music for the recording as well and I must say I think it's a piece that's going to the more I get engaged with it the more I think it's going to take over from other pieces of Handel. If you look at it in the context of his works you have the great Catholic Easter piece La Resurrezione which he wrote in Rome, you have this one which he wrote for the German Protestant Church and you have Messiah and it's absolutely bonkers that this piece has been ignored because it defines those three periods of Handel's creative life. And it is certainly as great a piece as both of those, if not better.